and I teach the course here at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. This program started basically because after my injuries in war, I didn't know how to deal with myself. I came back, had a brain injury, my best friend was shot killed. I didn't know myself at that point. Art has helped me by giving me a chance to have a voice again. I used to not be able to leave my house. I couldn't go talk to people. I would physically throw up and get sick. If you could be 0% that's committing suicide, 100% being the best you can be. After the Marine Corps, after being injured, I was at probably like a 9 or a 10. And after this school, I was back to like 85% me. For people who may struggle like I did and didn't want to break out of the house and be like, I'm not sure if this is going to work, I just want them to know my story and be able to come out here and learn with other combat vets how to do art. And if they're looking for one more way, if they just come out here and give me a chance, it's going to be worth it. What we were aiming for is to express what we were dealing with, you know, when we were deployed and during our military career, where we literally get out of our element, go on this kind of like alternate reality to go back in time, think about what we went through and express it to other people. Just being exposed to different concepts of art, like at the museum and some of the contemporary art we saw, um, that's what influenced me to try doing a performance piece for my last project. The opportunity to be at the school was just phenomenal. It was amazing. We could, at lunch, we could go and wander the halls of the museums and that was, that was pretty awesome. I think the hardest part was actually talking about what I've been through. With. It was easy talking to Richard because he is a combat veteran and he has been through stuff I've been through. And my job was to, you know, go find IEDs or find landmines or anti-personnel landmines and take them apart. And little did I know, I was putting that stuff inside me. At first, it's a little hard to let yourself become vulnerable. Um, you won't really know what to do right away. It takes a couple days. I know for me, it took a week. Being surrounded by a bunch of veterans that, like, know what combat feels like knows the after effects of combat, knows how it feels to come home. It was really comfortable being here. They're gonna come to class like normal college students, treated like normal people, that know how to be like, I can be in college, I am a normal person, and I could live like everybody else lives. If even one of them chose to go to college and study art and has that artist brain to where it saved them, it's totally worth it. Jason Myers. I'm a Nashville-based commercial photographer and director, and I'm here with Richard Casper, who is socially distanced about 12 feet away. We measured it earlier, and it's uh, it's it's 12 feet away. So um, we've been uh, very cautious and making sure we keep our distance. But uh, welcome to my uh, East Nashville studio. I wish I could spin a camera around, but it took us a little. Uh, little while to get this set up. We're learning as we go. Um, but today we're going to, uh, well one, I, I can't tell how many. The top right is the chat. Dude. Top right is the chat. And that blue is there. Hey, oh, Jason. hi. Some, oh, it's us talking to us. All right. Yeah. Well, hi to us who's standing here. I'm gonna, can, I text, can I text back to us? You could, but they could hear you, everybody can hear you, so. Sorry. Uh, if, you're, if you're typing, it's going to, from creative ads to people, and you'll see some random stuff pop up there every once in a while, like stream up, but that just shows that we're working. So, in the beginning, it's gonna be. Hey, someone said, hey, Jason. Hello, Jason. I think his name's Jason. Hold on, I'm moving. I've never done this before, so we are learning. And then someone else said, hey, Jason. Yo, Jason. That's two people uh -oh. saying hello. We have accomplished our goal of getting two viewers today. Well, uh, I'm just going to get started. Um, a quick backstory about me. I was, uh, I spent 13 years in corporate America. Sorry, Richard's back here. He's like the little, the little uh, devil or angel on my shoulder. 
It's like on this side. Oh, everything's reversed here. So you do look kind of weird on my shoulder right there. Um, and uh, I spent 13 years in corporate America in uh, healthcare and then in um, the golf and tennis business. And in 2010, I jumped ship uh, in December of 2010. And I used to say in a very uncertain economy, but uh, I think we're all experiencing uh, some uncertain economies uh, right now. But, uh, and uh, I jumped ship, picked up the camera, and um, just went all in on, on trying to figure out a way to be creative and uh, make a living uh, doing something that I really loved. And this has been a 10-year journey, and uh, now I'm in Nashville, and always uh, happy to be around uh, other creative people and share what I've learned and uh, a lot of what to do and what not to do. And uh, I still am figuring it out, but uh, today we're going to really just kind of step through a very basic um, portrait setup that I use or you can use. Uh, you can do it in your kitchen, you can do it in your living room, uh, you can do it on a street corner. Um, there really is nothing complicated about what we're going to do today. Uh, I'm just going to show you how light uh, affects a subject. I have, yeah, I've got fancy gear, and all the things here, but look past that. Uh, there's more to photography than gear. Um, working at my level, I, I do have gear that it's very dependable, repeatable. I use Profoto lights and modifiers uh, and uh, Nikon cameras. I know a lot of people will ask what kind of gear I have, but I don't want to focus too much on the gear. I just kind of want to show you my process and starting from zero and playing with light um, and showing how it affects the subject. In the, in the photograph. And apologies if you're seeing the screen with an empty empty stool, we had to put, we had to make a uh, kind of work around on the camera so that it's sort of exposed correctly um, because the little camera that's pointed at my monitor isn't exactly uh, um, adjustable. So we had to put some sunglasses on this camera to make it make it work so you can kind of see what's going on. It's, sorry if it's a little crooked. But, uh, well, hey, uh, in the comments, like, where is, uh, there's a couple of you guys and folks in here. Where are you texting from? I'm curious. Hey, by the way, Jason Headland, he's one of the last veterans that came through and you took the photo. Yeah, yeah, no, I see that. I love the photo. Thanks. Uh, man, I'm always happy to help. I, I love um, this collaboration with Creative Vets has been truly one of the most rewarding things I've done um, in my life, uh, being able to to provide my talents and skills um, in a very uh, sometimes haphazard way. We, I don't usually know who's coming through the door when I, um, when Richard or Brett calls me and says, hey, we've got uh, veterans in town and we want to uh, bring them by the studio. So it's always great meeting everybody that comes by. And again, thank you all for your service. And thank you all to the people out there that are supporting uh, Creative Vets and other Veterans Organization. So, okay, so we got Chicago, Illinois, well, Chicago and Illinois, uh, Texas, Montana, Denver, Minnesota, another Texas. Um, hello, Sarah. Hola. Uh, let's see, what do I remember from high school Spanish? Uh, La vida es una playa. That's all I've got. That and Puerto Real Baño, por favor. Those are the two things I learned from Mr. Garcia, who I had to play racquetball my senior year so that I could pass Spanish uh, to get into college. I gave him eight stitches because I accidentally hit him with the thing. I thought he was going to flunk me. Uh, that's a true story. I don't know if my mom who's watching remembers that story. But anyways, hi mom. Uh, she's in Trenton, Florida. And uh, she is probably the first time she's ever been on a stream, I'm guessing. She just got her new uh, smartphone a few months ago, which is one of those jitterbugs. So she's uh, she's figuring out how to text, which is dangerous for me. Go floor, everybody. Uh, Richard, someone's in here commenting about Richard. Richard, I said, yeah. Maybe. yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, hey, uh, if, if I if I can do one thing, I know everybody is uh, tuned in here, but uh, if you guys wouldn't mind, just all anybody that's watching, uh, maybe if you're not even uh, commenting. 
Share this link with one person right now that you think you could possibly reach um, who might be interested in this, um, even if it's for 10 minutes to, to listen to me babble. Um, I promise I'll get to shooting here in just a second, and hopefully you can see everything that I'm doing and hear me okay. Um, but just if I can ask just, just one person and ask them if they could share it to one person, I'm just curious to see how many folks we can get on this live stream today. Um, you want to talk about the prints too? Like oh yeah, we're gonna be giving out. Um, I pulled a few. If you want to... Yeah, uh, let's see. How do we? I just put them right behind there. Hold, like... hold fast. Richard's gonna dance behind me yeah. while I go get some things. Maybe, over. maybe for the if we get the highest donation can pose me. So if you donate, you can pose. <laughs> make me pose. Where are they? Right oh, now? right over here. I just took out like four. I think All one right. resident, one sports, one artist. Well, these are my old portfolio. These are pieces from my old portfolio. The ones on the uh, on the left. Oh yeah, I put some on the right. But I'm not sure if those are the ones you're talking about. See on the right over here. Oh okay, all right. Because I pulled like the Rhonda and the big okay, people. Okay, here I'll just let's see. All right. We'll make sure we're social distancing. We can't be in the same place at the same time. All right, Richard, back to your spot. Back to get back to your spot. All right. So so today, you know what? We're gonna. Uh, Wait, so so folks can donate? On so the, people can donate on, if they're on like Mixer or Twitch, there's a donate button? Mixer or Twitch, there's a donate button, apparently. Yeah, yeah. so if someone wanted to, as long as it's not like take your clothes off or super right. crazy, right. if they donate, they can pose me for that donation. All right, so really, five bucks and above, they can just, they can, they can donate and then tell me what to pose as. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, so uh, a little bit more about my background. I mean, at my core, I'm a portrait photographer. Um, but I do a lot of commercial work with brands and um, artists and celebrities, and um, and so the byproduct tends to be a lot of portrait work, and it's it's truly what I enjoy. Um, so we've got let's see, I don't know if there if anybody can see this, but here's a portrait of Kelsey Ballerini, um, and I will sign it and send it. You know what? I'm just going to send all these because they've just been sitting here. So so we're going to pick one. Two, three, four, five, and hold, hold tight. And one thing at the top. Oh. And someone else will get this fashionable Myers Quality Photographs hat by Whiskey Jam and my friends at Dome Hats who make them. And if you want just a hat, you don't care about any prints, just let me know. Um, so we've got Kelsey Ballerini. We've got the greatest of all time, Mr. Mariano Rivera. Uh, if you're into baseball or you know somebody that's into baseball, this was for JBL headphones. Uh, we've got Ronda Rousey. Uh, for the WWE, and we've got, I believe it's Jeff Hardy, and this was a WWE shoot I did a couple of years ago, and then how about, and we've got Jason Aldean and Kelsey Ballerini again, and I've got, uh, here, I don't know, Richard picked these, so, and then how about another WWE, this is Ray Mysterio, so. Um, so anyways, we'll figure out how to get these out to people. Uh, if someone wants... It looks like someone really wants a Mariano Rivera. Well, hey, let's, let's, let's wheel and deal, baby. Let's make this happen. Um, I'm going to set these down, and then we're going to get to talking photography and doing photography. Good warm-up. Good warm-up. So uh, can everybody hear me okay right here? Um, just a thumbs up for a... Thumbs up for a yes... Just want to make sure our audio is good. Um, once I see a thumbs up, then we'll get to we'll get to pushing buttons. Anyone, thumbs up? Or did you all leave me? If my mother knew how to get on here, she would give me a thumbs up. Uh, there's a little delay between the uh, conversation and the people. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So yeah, Jason, I remember that. Um, uh, up. We got a good thumbs up. So I'm a, I'm a loud talker, anyways. Here they come. We got the thumbs up. Bring them. Bring them. 
Um, so, so here's what we're going to do. So like I said, I am shooting today in my studio in East Nashville. And this is a very basic, this is my fallback, how I learned uh, lighting, really, was, was trial and error, experimentation. And if you're looking at the screen and you see that empty space, uh, actually, you know what I could do if I could figure one thing out? There are grids on there, and I'm going to take those grids off. We were shooting uh, a bottle for a, I don't know how to, hey, look at that. I figured something else out on my own. Um, we were shooting a, a, a whiskey bottle um, brand. I heard jingles. With the big what? The eight. See it right there? The big. Three. Oh, Brit Fire. Oh, yeah, so that, if, if you yeah. hear that bling bling, you just go over there and it'll usually say a name. And if they either, they're either going to give you sparks, which is kind of almost, it's not currency, but it's kind of a way that people interact with Are you. Are we a cryptocurrency yep. generator? Yeah, kind of like cryptocurrency. Or they'll follow you. And so you say the name, and thanks for the follow. Um, so if you hear that bling, just go over there and look at right. the name. Right All right, I'll come and look. I'm coming in hot. Hey, listen, like I said, anybody new that's joined in, if you, even if you're not commenting or in the comments, please share the link with one person. We are, we are truly at the very beginning of getting this thing going. And, or watch party on Facebook. That's been helpful too. Or watch party on Facebook. I don't know what any of this stuff does. I push a button for a living. So I'm going to just listen to Richard, and he's going to tell me what to tell you. But so, uh, anyways, like I was saying, um, when it comes to... For me, anyways, and this is such a subjective topic, and this is why it's always an interesting group usually gets together, because any kind of art, any kind of anything, is, it can be subjective. So for me, I like to shape light. I, my default is, uh, is, is actually using strobes and lights and shaping it and creating shadows and creating um, atmospheres. Um, and and that's not for everybody. Some people go outside and they, they can do that in the middle of the day and I don't know how they do it. Um, it's amazing how people can um, have their own specialties um, with, with lighting and, and light. For me, I love studio light. It's just a safe space for me. So when I am uh, planning any shoot, whether it's a, a simple portrait or a headshot, um, it's... I start with my background. What do I want? What, what do I want in, in the background? So today we're using a canvas that I had painted. Oh, maybe 2012 or 2013 um, by Sarah Oliphant. She's in New York. Um, she's. I mean, if you've seen any Vogue covers uh, by Annie Leibovitz, it's the same lady painted this canvas uh, as she's painted for. 25, 30 years um, up in her studio in Brooklyn, and I wanted something that I could easily transport that also gave me some flexibility in, in, in how I shoot. So this, this was my, my fallback go-to um, backdrop for, for years. Um, and now I'm in Nashville, I have some other folks. Uh, Rough Deluxe Backdrops and Talisha Lee are two that are here in Nashville that have, have really are, are amazing people and, and doing great things. So if you need um, a, a backdrop in your work for anything, uh, there are folks that can help you. But uh, if you go to my lot, if you go to my website, Jason Myers Photo, you can see probably this backdrop uh, with with actual celebrities in front of it instead of Richard. So uh, although Richard's been in Time Magazine more than I have, so uh, so so I start with my backdrop, and then I I, I have to remember who my subject is. Um, is it a business person? Is it is it a little kid? Is it um, a, an athlete or a celebrity, and my job is to figure out like what is going to help tell their story the best way in a single image or a couple of photographs. Um, so what I typically do is I put my subject where I want them, I turn my lights on, in this case we're using one pro photo strobe. Again, I'm just saying what I'm using so that everyone understands uh, kind of my process. And I've evolved and stepped up in gear through the years, but you could use a window light to do effectively what we're doing today. Um, just, 
I'm going to show you how different things affect the, the light falling on the subject's face by moving the light around, by turning the subject, and by moving myself around um, to get some, some images. So here's the first shot of the day. I'm not even sure what my settings are. It's kind of a lie. I, 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 I check my settings, but who knows? Uh, this is, if anybody will keep an eye on their screen, I am going to do a test with Richard in his socks. And I apologize. Uh, it, it's a little darker with what you're seeing than what I'm seeing. That said, we're going to keep that, Richard, for our archive. Um, but what I'm going to do, um, can I get a show of hands, possibly, by anybody that's just apparently the commenters here, of people who have ever tried to shoot with lights? Just curious. I don't know if anybody's even engaged, but I'm going to let you, uh, oh, look at that. i got a hype bot dabs. Whatever that means. Thank you, biannual pizza. Oh, I embers. That's actual money. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you very much. I don't know what any of that means, but it sounded like they know. Did it have a message on it, Brett? Yep. Here's some embers. Good luck with that. Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. So typically, they're sending embers. They'll send you a little message as you read it out. And so sometimes they'll say thanks. Sometimes they'll say make Richard do something. Well, I'm a little bit. <laughs> I'm just jabbering. So I may, if I miss anything like that, I apologize. This is all new for me. So. Um, so a couple folks are, are commenting, um, you know, everything I'm going to say today is, don't believe it. Don't believe it. I, didn't go to, I didn't go to art school. I didn't go to photo school. I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I practiced by, on my neighbors. I practiced on anybody that let me take their portrait. And yeah, I was going to say, can I see that bigger? I feel like I don't need to see that screen. Thank you. My robot, my creative robot. Um, so, you know, a lot of what this comes down to is finding your style and finding what you like. What I like is relevant, truly. It's what my clients like, and it's my job to execute their vision so that I can give them what they want. Um, now that I said that, whatever you want to do is perfectly okay too. If you want to make things artsy and blurry and ugly and throw paint on them, I mean, go for it. There's, there are no rules in art. I mean, that's obvious. I, I, I'm, I'm a walking example of that. So, um, so, so what I'm saying is, is there, there are no rules. There are rules. There are no rules. There are plenty of rules. Just do it. Do what you like. And if people gravitate towards it, and if you want to do it, do it for your family or, or, or commercially, then you're going to have fun doing it. So, um, so we got a picture of Richard here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start over, but I'm gonna keep that picture because I, that's gonna be printed. <laughs> um, so if everybody can, can y'all see me? Yeah. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by doing what a lot of people do, um, which is have a camera right at their subject, and the flash is on their camera right at their subject, and granted I'm using big, nice, soft modifiers, which is this big thing right here, and you don't have to have that, but obviously the bigger your light source and the more diffusion that you have, it makes it nice and soft. So uh, a basic shoot-through umbrella that you probably see on everywhere will do effectively what this will do. This just does it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to start with that high overhead, and we're going to show what that looks like. And then we're going to work our way around, and then we're going to play a little bit. And I'm going to shut up for a couple minutes and just start shooting. And feel free to say something or push a button or whatever's going on there. <laughs> so basically what we're doing, and I should probably have sand here, because... Uh, when you're working with some of this stuff, it gets kind of heavy. And shout out to my normal day-to-day day -day assistant, Laurel Higman, who is not here. She, she, she is she watching. She is, he, I don't know if she's watching. She should be. She better be watching. Because if she's not, then maybe I'm hiring today. And I'm going to have to fire her. Because I fire her like weekly. So, um, 
Hold tight. I am putting things together. As long as they get scared by that photo of me, though, they should be fine. Yeah, as long as you're paying attention to Richard uh, and his socks, we're good. So, so here's what I'm going to do. We are going to mimic what most people see because they just don't know any better. It's, there's nothing wrong with this. Uh, it's, it's truly just a personal preference on, on their style. So the, you know, the light is right behind me. I'm going to hide here. Oh, let's see, Richard, I'm going to have to shoot this way because the thing will. I'm going to come in closer and greet these folks. Ooh, very, uh, very ugly. Very underexposed. Like a mugshot. Yeah, that is, that is a Creative Vets mugshot. Um, so what I'm going to do, because right now there's not enough light getting there. It's flat. It's kind of ugly. Um, there's really not much to do here other than bump up my ISO, which is used to be called sh sh your, your film speed. And then I'm going to open up my aperture, which is the size of the hole in the, in the lens that allows light in. So, so this one should be brighter. It's still going to be kind of flat and ugly, mainly because of my subject. Richard has never acted that serious in his life. <laughs> So, so, so there you go. So that is a sort of properly exposed photo of Richard with the light right behind him. Now, there's a use for this. Uh, there are a million ways to shoot with, the, with this right over, over top of the camera or behind you, up high overhead behind you. Uh, it's like you're, wow, Richard, you look like you're in a tween movie. <laughs> It's uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know which one it would be, but you know, yeah, it would be a, all, all, all of the, the, the Tweeny Boppers movies. But so, so here's the here's the thing. This is a look. This isn't my preferred style because I like, like I, I was saying, it's shape to the subject. But let's see what happens when I start moving things. So why there is a? I gotta follow. Who got followed? You did. I gotta follow on what? Whoever's that red screen. On the screen. Yeah. Hey, I didn't even know I was on didn't know I was on a screen. What was the name, Brett? Mr. Two. Yeah. Mr. Two. He already followed before. Yeah. He's a refollower. Mr. Two Texas. Way to go, Mr. Two Texas. Hey, uh, I'm gonna say this throughout the thing. Uh, if you could, if you're watching, and even if you're not commenting, um, oh I see an actual camera question or a photo question. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, if you can Share this link with one friend, and if the, how many people are on here? 28 people? And ask them to share it with one person. I know you're all at home. I mean, everybody's home, sitting around, getting tired of watching Netflix. Um, you know, just share it with one, just one person, ask them to watch. Maybe they'll learn something. Maybe it's somebody who wants to get into photography. And, and, and this might be way over their head, but hopefully the pose that I get Richard to will entertain them. Um, and, and that would mean a lot to us and Creative Vets and starting and building this, this following and this audience. Um, and hopefully it will help one of you down the road with your own photography. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take another photo of Richard because he's my only subject. Actually, uh, I'm not even going to move that. I might have to move something. So here is another flat photo of Richard Casper. And it's a little underexposed still, but um, but we're gonna start we're gonna start moving the light around. And if you think about like shadows um, and how shadows work, obviously if the sun is lower, the shadow is gonna be longer behind you. If the sun is up high overhead, it's gonna create shadows on your face. So so we're gonna kind of move this modifier with the light around and. Kind of see what happens because that's my normal process. There's no method to my madness. So we're going to start. Let's see. I'm going to start right there. 
there. I hope I can shoot under this. You know what I'm going to have to do? Raise the roof. I'm raising the roof. Don't forget that camera question. Yeah, oh yeah, hold on. What was the question? How do I, is there any, would you, uh, Jason, would you use the camera raw filter and Photoshop to take the highlights out of the last photo? So, um, I, I don't use Photoshop very much. I am currently tethered to Capture One, which is another program. Um, it took me years to convert over because I was afraid of it and was, it, it just scared me. But I finally took the dive a couple, three years ago and it, it is a fantastic program for editing raw files. Now you can use Lightroom, you can use Camera Raw, but what I typically do, I mean, I, I'm kind of patting myself on the back here, is I kind of get it right in camera. Um, and, and a lot of the times it comes from having great assistance on set and they're gonna look for blown out highlights or areas that need shadow, or we'll move in a reflector, we'll bounce light. Today we're, we're really just focusing on, on kind of the, the thought process. But, um, but yes, you could go to Photoshop or, or um, Adobe Capture Raw, pull the highlights down. My camera gives me about a stop and a half or two stops either way. And, um, so it gives me some, some flexibility. I can screw up a little bit here and still be able to have a, a file that works. I've had stuff that I've underexposed terribly, overexposed terribly, and still was able to bring it back to where no one knew um, that, I, that I screwed the pooch. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, and what you're seeing on the screen right now is probably, it's, it's, it's it's just a, it's not exactly the most representative of what I'm seeing on my monitor. I I'm I'm next I'm, time we'll tether it. Yeah, we're gonna tether next time. I have a feeling we'll be doing more of these. Only if you forward this link or do something like that. I don't like I've been saying. So um, and don't apologize. There are no dumb questions, Jason. Just dumb people. Remember that. Uh, that's what my professor once told me. I'm just kidding. Um, feel free, ask all the questions. I'm going to try to answer every question that uh, pops up here. It can even be about um, uh, anything photo related. So, so now we're going to try this a little bit further off axis than what we had before uh, from the first picture that I shot of Richard. And I'm hoping I can have enough room here with my, my cable. So if Richard will stay there. And be very stoic. No, oh, oh, so now we 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 have blown him out. So on my screen it looks perfect. On your screen it looks like junk. So I'm gonna adjust a little bit for your screen. Um, I don't know why it did that. And that's another thing with photography is a lot of this is trial and error. And any highlights, I'm pointing at a camera like you know what I'm pointing at. Any highlights uh, or anything that looks blown out, I can assure you it is not. Because we're good here, we do things right. Um, but, if you can see, I'm gonna back up, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna shoot one more, and we're gonna look at a comparison. I, I stood in the exact same place, and all I did was move the light. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to the computer, I'm going to show you this image and that image. And it creates a little bit of drama, it creates, you know, it, it shows off his muscles, um, it creates a little shape, a little, sh little highlight and shadow. And a lot of times, it, it's called Rembrandt lighting uh, for the most part. It's just one. I mean, if you think about a Rembrandt painting, a lot of what's been, what's done in photography now is based off paintings, right? There was the old masters um, who would paint, and the only thing they could, they had they had light coming through the window. So light, shadow. Um, ah, late to the party. What camera are you using? I am using a Nikon D850. So. Um, I don't want to, I'm not typing, I'm talking. <laughs> so, uh, 
And uh, Armando, if you're new, the rule is, and everyone else here has already followed this rule, the rule is to share this link with one other person and ask them to share it. That's the only rule. That's, that's the only thing I'm asking for, for answering the camera question. So, so now, you know, let's look at this. I'm going to come in. Oh, I have to do one thing. This is going to fall off the... the uh, all right, so don't mind the change there. We had to put sunglasses on this camera to make it sort of usable. So I needed a little more length on the tether cord. So, so here's, here's the thing. We've got our light more or less dialed in right here. I'm going to change it in a minute. But you can also, and I'm using a, a longer lens today because it's, or so, oh, there's a good one. Uh, for social distancing. This is a new thing, long lens social distancing. Um, you know, I'm using a 70 to 200 Nikon lens. Um, will the replay be posted? Yeah, on YouTube. Yes, on YouTube. Oh, website. Oh, and, our website. and on the Creative Vets website. Creativevets.org slash live. Slash live. Um, so, so when you get the light where you want it to be, what you feel, then you can start playing. You can get your, your subject to turn a different way. I'm going to have Richard actually face that way, all the way. And this is, I'm just going to show you what happens when the light becomes, again, I haven't moved where I'm shooting from. It's flat again, right? It's flat because there's, there's nothing to slow down the light. It's just a picture of his face. Um, you gotta get your posture better, Richard. Just stand up straight. Um, now turn your head towards me. Stay right there. Now watch. That's still showing a little flat because of a little bright. Um, I'm gonna back this down just a smidge. Actually, I'm not going to change. So I'm adjusting, right now, I'm just going to adjust my shutter. Uh, I'm going to adjust my aperture just a smidge. I could bump down my ISO. Again, what you're seeing on the screen is not what I'm seeing on my screen. It, it, my screen is, is perfectly exposed for this setup. Yours does not look that way. Um, so you can lower the monitor, the actual monitor's um, light a little bit. With well, then I won't have a good representation oh, okay. of it. It's okay. This isn't bothering you guys, right? Right? I mean, yeah, figure it out. Use your brain. Use your, use your uh, imagination if that's perfect. Um, so, face back towards me, Richard. And I, I'm going to do this. Um, So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to move this light way over here. All right. So now this would be like Richard was sitting in a chair in Rembrandt's studio about to be painted, clothed, hopefully. Um, sit straight, real, real straight. Yeah, yeah, right, right there. Just go out. I'm just going to get up in your grill a little bit. So now, oh, look at that. So on my screen, it's not as contrasty as what you're seeing. The areas, I keep pointing at this like you can see me, but the areas on the bright side of the space aren't quite as bright, and the areas on the dark side aren't as dark. So it's, a, it's almost like a 50 50 split. Uh, I'm going to put a little tone on that just because I can, and this is America. Um, I like to cool things off in the shadows, warm things up in the highlights. Oh, that kind of, that didn't help, did it? Um, you know what? Yeah, it's all right. Oh, you can see it there? Let's see. I'm going to. I could put more sunglasses on this thing. Hang on. Put a little one. All right. 
Uh, we're, uh, so what we're having to do is put these uh, ND filters over this little camera to, because otherwise, this is what happens. See, it's all about light, folks. I'm waiting for someone, like, like someone to talk back to me, but. So, go, hi, Brandy. What up, Brandy? Brandy's popular in this chat room. All right, so let's see if I can do this without breaking it. All right, so that looks better ish. Yeah, I mean, at least it's not blown out. It's right, it's not blown out. So we're going to stay in that world. So, uh, sorry, I'm probably everybody's wondering what the hell I'm doing, sticking my face up here. Um, I'm just looking at this. Come on, man, let's ask some questions because I'm just going to keep pushing buttons. If no one has any questions, and I'm going to, I'm just going to do my thing. Lauren from Canada. We met last January at Whiskey Jam. Yeah. Hi, Lauren from Canada. I remember you. Uh, you're the one from Canada. Yeah, you're the one from Canada. No, they told me about Newfies. I found out what a Newfie was, right? Lauren, am I this the right person? Are you the Newfie one? Newfies, it's, a, it's like a people from uh, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. It's, a, it's a whole, yeah, she says yes. It's a whole language. I was learning about Newfies. They have their own language. So, uh, so anyways. So I'm just, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you by just moving the light, you can create something. Actually, I'm gonna take one more photo. Richard, now I want you to no, still face, facing me, but then just kind of looking. Yeah, right there. So uh, and, sorry, we're we're connected by a tether here. Uh, so now this should, yeah. Looks like a very optimistic looking to the future uh, portrait there. All right, hey Amy, any super basic photography tips? Get a camera. <laughs> that's the most basic. That is a, that is a, that is a very good start. Um, no, in all seriousness, and I, I, we taught a class in Dallas uh, to the veterans uh, two, three months ago, two yes. months, three months ago. Yeah. And uh, the one thing, and I kept harping on it, was don't let this slow you down from creating. The phone camera that you have in your pocket is more technologically advanced than what existed 10 years ago. So use it. There are apps where you can adjust exposure. And I'm going to show you something in a minute. We're going to play. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little wild. I've decided I'm going to get wild here. Um, and I might even shoot something with my, can I make my phone pop up on me? We can actually, we could, I, I'm not sure we can do it in the stream, but we just have it, to put up put that it. camera. But in the, All right. the next one, we can actually make a scene where it just blew you straight in there as mm -hmm. another clip. Yeah. I'm just not sure if we could do it while it's running. Um, hey, look at this. Is anybody else getting these, the no ID callers? Maybe they're sending my, home. maybe they're sending me my, my check. <laughs> Doubt it. Um, so anyways, and again, the colors on this aren't exactly accurate, um, but you get the drift. The, the point of all of this is to show you that all I've done is move my light, no, well, I have to go the other way with this, around to the side. And, and then get your subject to look, you know, one way or the other way, because watch, I'm going to have Richard do three different things. Okay. Straight towards me. Okay. All right, looking that way again. Okay. Looking down a little bit, right there. All right, now look that way. Now watch what happens here. Without any kind of fill on this side, not as flattering, right? It needs some help, it needs some, it needs, I don't know which way direction here. Yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. it needs, whoa, it needs to have some, this is hard, it's like reverse. Uh, oh, if you put your camera on the other camera, we can work with your actual monitor. Oh, hold on, this is, this is fun. Yep. Oh, oh, oops. Uh, 
Someone said, uh, Jason said, wow, Richard, Jason makes, makes you look amazing. <laughs> this is true. I have this effect. I mean, it's the only reason he comes here because he gets new profile pics. But, uh, but you can see. So, so what I would do if I were on a real shoot, I would bring in something, either another light or even just a piece of foam core or, or a piece of something white to bounce light back up into those shadows because it's, I mean, yeah, it's a thing, I mean, it's a look. Again, like I said, some people might love this and not like the other. So again, it depends on what you're going after. Um, so I'm gonna do one more thing with this light and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it up. What's our time? What are we, how are we doing? Oh, wow. All right, I'm still six feet away from Richard. Can you get moved? Just let me know. No, we're gonna, Uh, that might be too much, but I don't know. If anybody's ever worked with me or been on set with me, they know that there really is a, there's no method to how I do things. I just kind of start. And if you can see right now, this line is pretty much almost facing me. Now I'm going to have to probably back it down a little bit because it's going to be really strong because it's moved closer to Richard. So Richard, I want you to look at me, look straight at me. Now we've really just truly exaggerated that light, right? So we went from, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag this. Oh, I, I, need, a, I need an assistant. Laurel, are you out there? Because if you're not out there, I'm gonna fire you. And hire Jason. So, uh, I wish y'all could see how I'm having to do this on the camera here. Can you see that? Oh, it's not. Oh, it has to be on the big monitor. Oh, it has to be on the big monitor. Okay. I don't know how to get it up. Let's see. Over here. There we go. Can, you, can we see that? They can see that, right? They might be able to see it. Yeah. I gotta move over. You can make me smaller. All right. So you can see, I didn't, again, I didn't move myself, shot it from the exact same place, but all I did was move the light kind of back and behind Richard. So if you wanna see something fun, now, now that I've got it kind of in a weird spot, Richard, I want you looking this way again. Like turn your whole body. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna do, I'm shooting it from the exact same place I was. Oh, you know? And if if you can't really see this, but I mean the area behind him is a little bit brighter. I can see the back of his head, whereas on the monitor it's a little dark. Um, but Really, there are no rules here. You, um, in fact, you know, what is it? No rules, just right? I mean, that's it. It's all art. This is it. Um, feel free to ask questions, y'all. I'm, uh, this again, I've never live streamed, so I, okay, here we go. Uh, in what situation do you use a high ISO? I can't see what that. Yourself. Yourself. Um, all right, camera settings 101. So uh, three things determine a proper exposure, right? You have your shutter speed, which is the amount of time that light is coming through your lens and hitting the sensor. You have your aperture, which is the size of the opening in the lens that that light is going through to get to the sensor. And then you have your film speed or your ISO. And your ISO is basically the, the sensor in digital cameras and how sensitive to light they are. The lower the number on that, the, the least sensitive they are, the higher the number, the more sensitive, but you tend to get the files fall apart. At a certain point, they become all 
pixely and grainy and ugly. And now there's sometimes when if that's the only way you get the shot, that's what you have to do. There have been a number of times where I've been in a situation where my camera just could not do it unless I cranked up my ISO. Um, and, and that's usually the first thing that I will default to because I have fast lenses. I have 2.8 aperture lenses typically. And I have uh, my, I mean, for what I do, sometimes I can put things on a, on a, on a uh, tripod. So I, as long as my subject's being really still, I can get away with it. But if I'm shooting my music and it's really dark, and I've been in some scenarios where there was no light. I mean, the, the bands had no light on them. It was pitch black. So I had to crank up my ISO. Now, I'll be honest, I don't like going higher. I mean, I like to keep my ISO low. Right now, I am currently at 400 ISO. These cameras, they can go significantly higher. I just like a really clean file. Some photographers don't care. They'll start at 1,000, 2,000. Some of the cameras can, I mean, they go up to the hundreds of thousands. I just don't like to push my, uh, I don't like to push my gear that, that hard. It's, I don't need to most of the time. But sometimes it's better to get, the, get a shot than, the, than no shot. And sometimes you have to, to push your eye so up that Would you say it's always best to be at the lowest ISO as long as you can? Just because of the I, Yes, what Richard said, if you can hear him, is in my opinion, always try to be at the lowest ISO you can be to effectively get the exposure or the shot that you want. It's going to be a cleaner file. You can blow it up bigger. It's going to look nicer. There's not going to be grain and just artifacts throughout the file. So I would encourage you to always start as low as you can and bump it up in increments. And sometimes when I say that gear isn't important, sometimes gear is important that way. But for the most part, it's like I used to have friends when I was living in Florida and they were always asking, what camera do I get? What camera do I get? What camera do I get? I'm like, well, what are you going to use it for? I want to take pictures of my kids' soccer games, but the cameras I always have, uh, the, the pictures I get are always blurry. Sorry, we're, we're look at that. Look at that. Work on that. Work on that shoulder a little bit. Y'all like this interaction? Look at this. Oh, see, this is, this is fun. Uh, so, but, but they always would take pictures of their kids at soccer games with a, like a consumer camera with the kit lens, and it would be on auto. So just like this little camera that we're using to point at this screen is trying to do everything to make it a correct exposure, it doesn't know that I have highlights and shadows in the image. It's looking at it globally and going, I need to have it at this exposure to make it uh, a, a correct exposure. So what it's going to do, it's going to look at that and go, man, there's a lot of dark in there. I'm going to have to slow my shutter down to properly expose it. And that's what happens when when folks are at their kids' soccer games and it's dusk and they have a very slow lens and the camera's on auto, the camera doesn't know that your subjects are moving. So everything's blurry because it's having to slow the shutter speed down to get a proper exposure without cranking up the ISO or having a lens that's capable of being a faster lens to let more light in. So anyways, that was a long answer, but um, so I'm going to play around a little bit with this setup, and then I'm going to, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do here. So we are going into one hour. This is going to be crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious. How many we got left? We got 22 people. We've kept 22 of 28 people. Um, again, we're giving away some prints, y'all. Uh, I'm going to show them again. And uh, if, you, if you see one you like, what was our, we don't really have a metric on how we're giving these out, so maybe it's just the person that tells me how handsome I am and I get a photograph today. So, um, anyways, we have got, let's see, we have Ray Mysterio from the WWE, we have Jason Aldean and Kelsey Ballerini, 
have, I don't, again, Richard picked these that I had printed, but Jeff Hardy, who's a WWE wrestler, this is kind of, kind of trippy. Put that on your office wall when you go back to work. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, it's safe, it's safe. Uh, Ronda Rousey, who, uh, fighter and wwe -er. We got into some trouble this week, did you see that? Apparently she, uh, she just made a comment that, you know, she loves the, the fakeness of this wrestling and all the wrestlers are mad at her. Oh, it is fake. Uh, got Mariana Rivera, played with the Yankees. That was a fun, that was my first big commercial advertising sheet. And then Kelsey Ballerini from Artist of the Year a couple years ago. So, um, man, just, just push in some uh, comments or hit that forward button. You know, I know not everybody's forwarded this because if everybody forwarded it to one person, we'd have forty people. Yeah, maybe not that many, but we'd have more. So, go, you know, um, Lauren. Don't get your hopes up. This is mostly just me yapping. So, you know. Um, anyways, all right. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna play around here. Uh, for a few minutes. I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna shut up and shoot for a couple minutes and see if I can get something fun for Richard's portfolio of images. Uh, and probably do something here a little more, a little less dramatic. Well, but I'm very dramatic. And again, I would probably put a, some kind of bounce or fill here, but I'm not going to do that because not everybody has that. But and again, what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to show you that it can be, it doesn't have to be these fancy strobes. I'm going to have other fancy things, but actually, you know what? I'm not. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to use, I'm going to do something. So stand by. Stay right there, Richard. Look over your left shoulder. So you can see, I mean, again, it's just moving the light around. Um, one thing I could do too, if I had more, this isn't going to be a pretty frame, but um, if I had more backdrop behind him, or I had room to slide that over in assistance today to do that, but now I'm, I'm, uh, I'm moving around myself. I've been in one place, but You can see how sometimes just moving my body in relation to the light creates that that drama as well. Let's see. Someone says, "Oh, see, someone, see, Lauren wants the Jason Aldean one to look good in her office. Uh, crucial. I always keep the ISO low. I'm looking forward to Sony's new sensors being widely available. Um, the new." New Note 20 should have those Sony sensors. You know, I don't nerd out too much over the sensors. I mean, they've all improved over the years. Don't put your, look, I could give this camera to Brett right now and he would not know how to do it. And it's a very technologically advanced camera. It's designed to not mess up. That said, it all depends on the person behind it. I have. I mean, it's trial and error. It's understanding how light works. It's understanding, understanding your camera. The first thing, the best thing you can do is read your camera manual. That, that should be, after you buy your camera, read the manual. That's my tip. My, that's pro tip number two. Stay right there, Rich. So what I'm gonna do, just because I liked where that was going, uh, I am going to, Richard, you'll stay right where you're at. I am still keeping my distance from Richard, mainly because he has been known to have cooties before the COVID-19 outbreak. And by the way, I hope everybody's doing well. I know this is a weird time and Probably just bored in your house listening to me talk, but hold on, 17, 18, 
All right, we, we're going to stream shame those people that left. I, I want to know who left. I'm just kidding. Um, 23 people. Hey, come on, let's bring this thing back up. Uh, Armando, absolutely. You can send uh, your work for a critique. In fact, uh, in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be offering uh, portfolio reviews online. Uh, where we do like a one hour Zoom session. I haven't figured all that out yet. It's just been stuff I've been wanting to do. Um, where we can go through, um, you can share, my, share your screen, look at your website, um, we'll be doing some of that, we'll be doing some, some consulting, just any little thing that can help. Um, obviously, it's like everything else, we're all trying to figure out ways to, to generate a little bit of revenue so that we can have money to pay our dog food bills. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, always happy to give my opinion. Again, it's just my opinion. I, I feel like I have a pretty good track record of, uh, of picking uh, strong images and weak images and things that fit your portfolio. So, and again, it all depends on what you want to do. You can, I hired a consultant a few years ago and I'm not going to say who it is, uh, but the, uh, the, uh, I didn't like how they curated my site. Um, and I, it wasn't their fault. It was just a different, I wanted an outside look. I got that. It really didn't fit, fit what I was looking for. So I have to take a five second break. Richard, if you can hold this audience of 24 people uh -oh. for That's a huge less than three minutes, I'll be right back. This is how photography works. I'm bidding on a project and we have to have it done by uh, end of day today, so I want to make sure the person that just called me has it all finished. So stand by, because I have to pay my bills too, y'all. Well, hello there. Hey, everybody. It's the guy in the photo. That's a little. Oh, it's uh, the glass is also blurring this thing again, but we can we can check that. But yeah, again, the reason why we're doing this too is uh, mainly because of the isolation. We want to make sure that veterans while they're stuck in their home, still have access to this kind of material. It's so much different when you can watch a YouTube video, but you don't actually get to interact with anybody. So if you're watching, say, a guitar lesson, or you're watching, say, a photography lesson, there's still this kind of, you feel isolated because you can't talk to the YouTube channel, and you can't talk to the screen. But with streaming is what we found, it's kind of helped that kind of break that monotony of isolation because you could say something to me and I can instantly just say something back to you. And so we're having a conversation. So, and feel free to steer these streams, every one that we do, anywhere you want to go. Because he's teaching portrait with one light. But if you said, hey, if I want to incorporate another light, how do I do that? He can still pull in another light. We don't have to stick to the, to the main stream. But uh, yeah, Armando, I missed, I'm super sad that we couldn't do, um, we had about, I was in Dallas once and I was actually about to fly out the second time, that's um, all right. That's all right. And then we just no, got no. canceled. Probably no. I, I want to get like it to him before five o'clock. Uh, me and Wayne Brzezinka, the collage artist, and he'll be actually he'll be doing a collage class on Thursday. He did one a few weeks ago, but he's a famous collage artist. Um, does a ton of awesome stuff. Ooh, what's the web page? Is that the? Oh yeah. So here's our streaming schedule. Page one is that we have coming up. Um, and you can find us at uh, creativebits.org slash live. No, just leave page two, no big deal. And it'll, uh, it'll also bring you to like the latest streams. Actually, oh, Wayne's good. old stream is on the front great. page right there. Um, I think looks we can great. scroll on this screen so looks you guys great. can see possibly. So scalable. Is there like an like interactive? That's good <laughs> oh, yeah, it's already put it in gear and it, it just, yeah. it's so hard to define. Interact. Sweet. So yeah, so much stuff. scrolling down, and yeah, I feel like the so photography, yeah. that's what we're doing yeah. right now. And so yeah, Wayne Brzezinka, he's teaching some more advanced collage instruction. That's great. Um, and, um, page, so uh, you guys could, again, chat with him about anything. He's awesome. You could, he's been 10, actually uh, emailing and texting with a guy who was in our second straight up editor's very screen last paragraph. week, and he's been critiquing There's some of the work. There's an extra eye. So we have some ink drawing. Um, this Miss Julia, who's a streamer it. on Mixer, she's actually teaching us how to create face um, masks out of your camis or any like skippy shirts. And then Luke Pell, um, better, he's hot. He's super hot. Uh, is doing a workout at 9 a.m. Yeah, it looks great. Central time. Um, and then we got our art director you? Derek doing some mixed media painting. And okay. then Rick okay, doing I'm, songwriting. It, look, it so looks Rick, great. If you 
you guys are interested in songwriting yeah. at all, I mean, Rick is the man to talk so to. So you want to put, uh, send me, uh, ago, he stood up the very first send me a PDF of that, that and then I will craft an email in the next uh, he's had one with George 30 Jones minutes, and a bunch of other 40 minutes, way and, back uh, and I'll he's send instructing some songwriting. And so right, each buddy. class is Thank kind you very of, much. it's typically right, wrapped around uh, a certain topic, but again, let the just tell the, the instructor kind of what you want to know because you're the audience and we want to teach you the skills that you want to learn and so we can easily kind of uh, go towards what you want so again oh yeah these are our past streams we just had a wheel thrown earlier and then saw running so any of the classes we've ever taught you can go back ukulele all that fun stuff you can go back and just rewatch it you just won't be able to interact now we got jason i'm back y'all Everyone stopped chatting, so I obviously didn't. Yeah, did you, uh, you lost all of our audience, though. Way to go, Way to go Richard. Oh, there's 20 people. All right, all right, 20 of y'all. So I'm going to ask again, 20? All right, here's the real, okay, here we go. I want to do the <laughs> This limited edition, brand new, and I will disinfect it with the disinfectant, uh, Myers Quality Photographs hat. With uh, from Whiskey Jam, which is a live music event here in Nashville twice a week, and you can watch it now. He's doing IG streams Monday and Thursday night at nine o'clock Central. Um, I received one hundred message today. Today, what is, I don't know what that means. Oh, I was all excited. Um, the person who forwards the link to the most people, and they. Say who forwarded them to get them here is gonna get this hat. Yeah, they have to say that. This person brought, this me, person this person brought me into this live stream. So, Lauren, you're very engaged here on this stream. I mean, if you can't get like five people to jump in so that you can get this quality trucker hat for free, this is like a $28 hat. Minimum. Minimum or maximum. Take out that front, it's 30. Yeah, if you put <laughs> some black tape over this, you probably sell it for more. But uh, so, anyways, I'm going to play uh, around for a few more minutes. Um, I do have to probably shut this down at 4 30 because I have to put together an email to send to a potential client who is taking to give it us to today to send bids. And it's been a, about five days of putting this together. So, um, that's the part no one sees. This is all fun stuff where we just get to play and push the button. It's the emails and the bidding process and all those things that make it uh, a business and work, and uh, which is why we have to charge for our work. But anyways, so I missed some comments. I've jumped into the music world since I last saw you. The photographic country music definitely hooked. That's great. Uh, I would say find another avenue so you can make money. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, why, why do you think oversaturated images are so popular these days? Uh, the same reason desaturated images are popular these days, because people just put a, push a button and make it do a thing. It, I, not my style, not my style, but it's out there. Um, I, I think it's, it's not my style. I'm not gonna knock it. It's not for me or my any of my clients. Um, in fact, I did have a client who was overcooking my images and posting them on Instagram, and I threatened I'd never work with them again if they ever did that. And I told them it's it's basically like it's like when people put filters on your images, um, which they shouldn't do. Hey, Derek Champagne, I just plugged the dome hats. I know you can get five people, and then I will give you this quality. Myers quality photographs hat that you made if you get the most people on this stream to say that someone referred them. I haven't seen anybody yet. So, uh, but anyways, I when people put filters on images that are provided to them by professional photographers, it's like ordering a dinner at a five star restaurant, having the chef bring it out to you and set it on your table, and you grab the salt shaker and start putting salt all over the food before you even try it. You know, it's kind of, a, kind of a jerk move. But anyways, so, and I'll call you out on Instagram if you put 
filters on my photos. And anybody that knows me that's on here, that you know, I'll do that. We just call you out anyway. I'll call you out anyways for no, for any reason. All right, so I'm gonna shoot a few more minutes. I'm gonna play around. Then I'm gonna pull out. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something I don't think I've ever done in here. So uh, real quick though, Richard, stay right there because I know that I moved everything. Straight straight in. Just your eyes at me, Richard. Chin two. <laughs> All right, real relax, relax. I don't even know what these look like, but I know they're not terrible. But Just the eyes that you would be in front of me. Yeah, so, so here's the thing. Um, there, I shared this to my IG story. Oh, let's see how many people like you, Lauren. Um, oh, here we go. Byron, hello, invited by Dallas fan. Glad to be here. Dallas fan, is that a person? Or is that the name of their thing? You're winning, you're winning right now. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna call it. We're gonna have to remember who Dallas, fan. Dallas yeah. fans referring people. Hey, so here's your challenge, Byron Jeffrey. Send that link to somebody else. Let's bring them in here. Let's, let's get wild. Come on. You know, can't be terrible with that stud of a bottle. I don't, I don't know what that means, Derek. But do you ever stage HDR photos? Nope. Um, nope. Not my, not my thing. Um, it was a thing in the, like, Late 90s, like our late 2000s, early, like 2011, 12, there was this whole highly oversaturated HDR world. And I think people liked it because they had never seen it before. It doesn't do real well in the commercial world where I'm at. Um, so for fine art stuff, or yeah, some people like it, it's not my thing. My guess is I think you've asked a couple times that that's, that sounds like what you like. So uh, by all means, do your thing. Um, all right, so I'm going to do something here. Stand by. I'm going to get the, uh, the very expensive equipment. Hold, hold. All right, Richard. Yeah. Uh-oh. I mean, not everybody can, uh, not everybody can go to the Home Depot and buy an LED bulb. I don't even know if this works, but we're going to clamp and clamp this to something. Let's see if this, uh, hold on, let's see. I am going to, and my point in all this is to just Drive home that you don't need fancy gear all the time to get a photo. Um, now, this is a this is a little different than. Uh, let's see. Do I have a? I gotta get. A, you're good. I, I got another. I got a good extension cord, which are, uh, and again, if you don't have anything, any fancy gear, good. I didn't have fancy gear when I started. In fact, fancy gear can paralyze you sometimes. Too much gear can paralyze you. I've, I've gotten some of my best my best shoots when all I had was a camera and a lens. And I had to literally figure it out to get the shot. And I guess what, it worked. Uh, so I don't even know if it's gonna work, but I know it, right. it should work. Oop. You miss all the shots you have to take. So here's what we're gonna do. This is going to be, and also, the light kit's on like Amazon, so if you can get them. 
yeah, you can get these things. Uh, oh, Amanda Merrill introduced me. What's up, Colin? You got some competition up there somewhere. Dallas fan. Dallas fan. Hey, come on. Hi, Kurt Ozan. Are you learning anything, Kurt? You know, I mean, I just want to know if Kurt Ozan is learning anything because he comes by my studio like once a week and I'm never here. So I'm kind of doing this for him also. And uh, Kurt, share this with one other person, but not David Bergman. Because you have to pick sides on who your favorite photographer is here. And uh, so anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. This is a $8 Home Depot shop light. Now I'm gonna have to adjust my settings to be able to probably pull this off. But the point of this, it's not gonna look like that because I don't have a modifier, but I'm gonna try to play here for a second. So let's see what happens. And all I do is have a $8 Home Depot shop light and an LED bulb. Uh, I learned I don't need gear, but I already have some. What did you change the settings to? Uh, so I, I increased my shutter speed, which will limit the amount of light, um, because right now it's super hard. And I opened up my aperture to allow more light in. I know it sounds kind of counterproductive, but, and I dropped my, or I bumped my answer. I don't know, I'm just, let's see what happens here. I'm gonna take a picture. So now, when I was talking about shadows, if you look at that last image, it's a nice, soft shadow. But because I don't have anything modern, like diffusing this light, watch what happens behind Richard's. It's a hard shadow, if this even is anywhere properly exposed. So right now it's not even, so I gotta work on this. So, so what this is telling me is it's just not, a not as much light as what I thought. So I've changed my settings. Okay, shop light. But see how hard that shadow is behind him? So hard. Um, so I can do, if you're at home, you can get a, a white bed sheet. You know what? It could be a cool, a cool effect too, like the shadow on the wall. Yeah, I mean, it depends again on what your goals are, right? So um, I'm just trying to figure out how to do this without having to bring everything up here. I don't want to overcomplicate this. But again, this is still just one light. Um, let's see. Again, you, you could use a bed sheet. You could put this, uh, you could put a sheet over a window, same effect. Um, you could, you could get, you could, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Shower curtain, white shower curtain, something that kind of is, is translucent or transparent. And now here's chip clips. Huh? These are just egg clamps from Home Depot. That's what I was thinking. Chip clips. Chip clips. Chip clips. Yep. Yeah, th this is okay. If any of my peers are watching right now, they're probably going, what is he doing? Get a photo of this setup. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna to have to adjust my camera settings again. Probably. Come on, y'all! Yeah, nailed it. So, if you look, the shadow behind me, I'll back, I'll shoot it wider. I'm gonna leave that in front of me. The shadow softened up behind him, right? I'm gonna show you the $3,000 setup. And then the $8 setup. So don't let gear paralyze you. I could, I mean, and, and, and to be completely honest, I've had scenarios where my lights have gone down, cameras blowing up. Uh, 
I'm gonna tell you what, look at this Wikipedia. There's nothing wrong with that. And again, what you're seeing is a little bit overexposed. Um, it looks like Richard's wearing makeup. Richard, are you wearing makeup? Are you wearing makeup? Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, again, it's learning how it, now everybody watch, so, well, hold on, we gotta figure out where I'm pointing. Watch right, I gotta go, everything's reversed. Watch right here. I'm going to take this, this piece of diffusion. Lauren Stoner, uh, you can paint your own backdrops. I, like I said, this is from Sarah Oliphant in Brooklyn. This is a pretty expensive backdrop. This is like 1400 bucks, so it's an investment. Um, Talisha Lee here in Nashville, she's on Instagram. It's uh, Talisha Lee. Uh, and then Ruff Deluxe Baptist here in Nashville, they hand paint canvases, and they're not inexpensive, but if you're going to use it a lot, the reason I got this is I can make this go different colors, it's got texture, it's classic, it's portable, so, I mean, I've paid for this thing 10 times over by charging my client fractionally to use this every time I shoot. So, um, watch the background where Richard is when I pull this out of the way. See that? See how hard that shadow is? It's like cloud cover coming in. Watch. Cloud cover softens things up. Super bright mid midday sun. See that right there? See how soft that is? And again, it doesn't matter. And the closer I get this light uh, to Richard, which I'm not going to get any closer because we're being safe here. Um, the softer, whoa, the bigger the light source becomes. So imagine, so right now, I'm kind of small. And the closer I get to this camera, the, the, nothing's changed, but the bigger the source has become, and that's going to soften things up. So, hey, Kurt Ozan, uh, what's your number one tip that you've learned about one light portrait lighting. Are you in there? Are you still in there? I'm curious. By the way, Kurt's a, uh, a musician here in town, but has turned into uh, being a very talented photographer in his own right. He, uh, he's on tour and uh, has an opportunity to shoot a lot of live music, but has um, actually been doing a lot of portrait work too. So bravo, Kurt. Proud of you, buddy. Um, if you're not in there, I just gave you a nice plug. So. Um, but I'm curious, uh, there you are. So what's the one tip that you could, that you've learned because you've only been shooting for about a year, right? About a year, uh, that has helped you going from a complete newbie to understanding portrait light, uh, light. Never mind. Uh, it's not a bit like, we, we, we really haven't discussed reflectors because this is really about um, just having one light. Foam reflector from an art store. So watch, we're gonna, I'm gonna effectively do the same thing. You can get this at an art store, you can get this from Home Depot, any kind of, again, you can, I mean, this is a little elaborate, but it's just a big white piece of, Cardboard. And what it does, it bounces light that it, you can't really see it, but it bounces the light back in and, and opens up shadows. Um, thank you for the tip. Um, again, I, 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 it's a tie right now, right? One to one on the, uh, y'all, I'm just saying, I mean, that fancy, you know, hat. Limited edition hat is going to go out in the next, whenever I go back to the post office. And uh, we're going to give some prints out too. Um, we'll probably reach out after the stream and pick some lucky guests somehow. I don't know if we can we reach back out to these people. Yeah, maybe they can get Daniel on Instagram. That's yeah, awesome. anybody that wants any of this stuff, just send me a DM on Instagram. <laughs> and I'll let Richard pick. 
Uh, that way I'm, I'm out of that. Also, what you're just talking about, bringing light source as close as possible helps a ton for softer light. Exactly. You know, you can soften it up. You can bring it in. Like, watch. Here. Here's a perfect example. We're now going to take this away. And we're going to bring this in. So right now, a little, 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 little loopy here. Kind of some tape always helps. Um, again, this is truly just an $8 shop light from Home Depot. Oh. So right now, that hard shadow is behind Richard. All right, so I'm going to... I'm going to, bump. I have to change my settings back, and this is again something that just comes with learning your camera and learning what you're doing. But let's see, so right now, now we're going we're gonna to make this RT. We're going to have some stuff in the foreground. So I've got to still have to open up because that's a little dark. So I'm shooting through my through my uh, stand there, but so super hard light when up close. <laughs> this is an interrogation. Super hard light when really up close can become really nice soft light. Because it's softer. Here, hang, hold tight. It's, it's not as blown out as it looks, y'all. Softening up. Yeah, good. I just realized my white balance on auto sunshine. Look, I'm. I'm not worried about all that stuff there, but, but look, I mean, it's softened it up because I got the source closer to my subject. I back it out, watch, watch what happens to the shadow behind Richard right now. So there's a shadow on him, right? Well, I'm losing my light to begin with. Maybe this isn't the best example. Getting crispy, right, when it gets in there? Just because there's not a lot of power in this little eight dollar LED light. But um four thirty so if you want to Yeah um well guys and girls and everybody that's tuned in I I hope some of this helped and man I'm all I'm fired up. I want to do this again Richard. We will um, this isn't like the most again this isn't the most uh um creative um photo shoot I've ever done. Someone give me some hype it's a hype burger it's a hype burger yeah, we'll make sure that we're tethered next time too, so they can see the real, yeah. the real. Deal. Thank you, Mister Two One Two One Four. Um, you know the goal here is. Uh, oh, hey Zach, don't worry, it's going to be on uh, Instagram. Mister Two One Two sent me some pandas. Thank you. I don't know what that means, but they do. Uh, there's going to be a replay. This is going to be on the YouTube channel, um, on uh, the Creative Vets. Dot org slash live and um, yeah we're gonna do this again and, and you know again the goal today was to just just to get people out of their own headspace and help them understand that sometimes it's not as complicated as it seems um, you know do good work work hard learn help other people and uh, you'll figure it out so uh, thanks again Thank you for tuning in. Mom, I know you're still probably there unless you uh, left me for Judge Judy or something. So I'll uh, sign off. We are a nonprofit that's helping combat disabled veterans heal through the arts and music. 
Our art programs in Chicago and California help combat disabled veterans tell their story through art. We enroll them into the best art institutes in the country. We pay for their tuition, their housing, their food all three weeks so that they can finally tell their story through art. We also bring combat disabled veterans to Nashville, to places and rooms like this here at the Grand Old Opry to tell their story for the first time with pro songwriters all about the things that they went through that they've never been able to talk about before. These programs have been extremely successful in helping veterans combat their PTSD. Right now, Creative Ed's has more veterans applying for our programs than we do funding. So if you can go to creativeets.org and donate, we would appreciate it.